Greetings Game Explorers, today we will be exploring Sam and Max Hit the Road. Developed and published by LucasArts in 1993 for MS-DOS and 1995 for Macintosh. Maniac Mansion and The Secret of Monkey Island are two landmark point-and-click adventure games. The former made graphical adventures more intuitive by eliminating the text parser with the point-and-click scum engine, and the latter made them more accessible, with no deaths or unwinnable situations. These fun, humorous games were each followed by sequels, Dave the Tentacle and LeChuck's Revenge, two of the best games in the genre. With the success of these games, LucasArts wanted to try something new. Steve Purcell, creator of the comic Sam and Max Freelance Police, worked at LucasArts as an artist, and so LucasArts put him in charge of a game adaptation. Sam is an anthropomorphic dog modeled after the detectives of film noir. Max is his goofy rabbit sidekick with a penchant for random acts of violence. These detectives, with their quick wits and loose sense of ethics, are on a mission to track down a Bigfoot, while a British country western star seeks to use him in his band. Your adventure will take you across America, visiting bizarre tourist traps along the way. If you're expecting something edgy like the comic or the eventual cartoon, this isn't it. That being said, it's still very funny with loads of slapstick and dry humor. If you played other LucasArts games, you'll know what to expect. Look around, pick things up that you may not need until way later in the game, and engage in witty banter with the various NPCs. Some of the solutions may not make a whole lot of sense, but your mileage may vary, and keep in mind that this came out at a time when most of us didn't have a hundred other things distracting us. Fortunately, this is a LucasArts adventure game, and you can never get into an unwinnable situation, so take all the time you need. The game makes numerous changes to the LucasArts adventure game formula. It does away with the toolbar system for commands and inventory. Instead, having a separate inventory screen and a right-click interface to select commands. This allows the action to take up the whole screen. Unlike previous LucasArts adventure games, which list out conversation options, this game has icons representing questions, exclamations, non sequiturs and various conversation topics. The idea here was that having half the joke written out for you would kill the humor. Interestingly, this was one of the only LucasArts games to have this. Throughout the game, we play various mini-games. Some are required to progress, whereas others are just fun diversions. That's alright, and it all fits the silly turn of the game. My favorites are probably the Battleship clone, and this whack a -rack game that lets you hit Max on the head for sure amusement. This game's soundtrack delivers on creating an atmosphere, especially that jazzy intro song. It all uses the I'm Used sound engine from Monkey Island 2 to create its dynamic soundtrack. Because this game has not yet been remastered, the GOG version is in fact the DOS version running through the Scum VM emulator. This means you can play around with the audio options. It defaults to ad-lib sound, which I know is primitive even by 1993 standards. So go seek out some MT32 sound fonts and experience this PC classic the way it was meant to be. If zany cartoon adventures loaded with brain teasers are what you seek, Sam and Max might be for you. The ending isn't the best thing the LucasArts scheme has delivered, that would be Monkey Island 2, but it's at least funny. If you're seeking out more games like Monkey Island and Dave the Tentacle, I'd definitely say it's worth a look. There are two more LucasArts adventure games I'd like to share at some point, a certain biker, a certain skeleton, so stay tuned.